Hey there, before we get started, I saw another YouTuber do this and I really liked it, so I completely and shamelessly ripped it off. <laughs> so, do you find my videos interesting and helpful? If you do, why don't you like and subscribe? If not, why don't you leave me a thumbs down or tell me what you think I should do and maybe we could do that. But, without further ado, let's jump into it. Hello everyone. So a while back I made this video, uh, kind of going over how to get harvestable trees and rocks and stuff into your scene. And uh, with everything I've learned, getting ready for the co-op farming RPG series, I feel pretty safe in saying... So let's look at how we would do it the right way. Because that other way it might work for a smaller environment, but if you got a large open world, it's going to be pretty performance demanding. So I'm here in a mostly clean project. The only thing I've done is I've altered my character controller. It's a third person mode, but I wanted a first person. So all I've done is just update this character to have that. So how would we do this? How do we get it to where we can interact with foliage objects and then convert them into blueprint actors when we're actually interacting with them? So we will need a few things. First thing we are going to need is an actor of a base harvestable. This will be whatever you're gonna, you'll create child blueprints of this for your trees, rocks, bush, all that jazz. So I have imported, imported a little asset pack. I'm gonna be using this stylized low poly environment just because I don't have any or just so I can have some trees and rocks to demonstrate with. This will work with any mesh that you have or any project that you're doing. But what we want to do is we'll go into our character and I'm going to create a little function or action event. I'm just going to get this keyboard one and then up here on the right I'm going to change it to E that seems to be the standard for interacting. And then I'm going to create a function called interact. And I'm going to hook that up just like that. Now what I want it to do is when I try to interact with stuff, I want it to do a sphere trace for objects. I want it to start at my follow camera, get world location, because we want to see where our character is looking, we'll get the forward, vec forward vector. Now you would set this up basically however you're doing, if you've got a third person game you would do it on a trace from your animation, etc. So from the forward vector we will multiply. We can right click and convert this pin to a float because I want it to go about 100 units out. Then we will add this to our world location for our end point. I'm going to set the radius to about 20 and then for the object types we can make an array and just world static for now. So I'm going to do a draw debug for duration just to see that it is working as intended. Bueno. Alright, so on our out hit we want to break that hit result. We'll add a branch with a B and a left click. Hook that up because if it overlaps something we want to see what it's overlapping. L overlapping. So if it's overlapping we want to see if the hit component is an instanced foliage instanced static mesh component because that's what when you paint foliage on it on the ground that's what the visual representation is that's what those static meshes actually are they're foliage instanced static mesh components so if it succeeds then we want to get the instance transform that we have currently hit and to get the one we're actually looking at, we will get the hit item. Plug that right there. You want to make sure you're looking at the world space and not local. So 
So once we have the instance transform, let's spawn actor from class. We will hook that instance transform right there. Oh, and we want to get the static mesh from here because we need to tell it which static mesh you've hit and which class we're going to want to spawn. So we're going to select a class based on a local variable that we set up that will be our harvestable mesh types. Now this one is going to be a static mesh static mesh object reference and we're going to make this into an array. Compile that real quick. And out here let's go ahead and set up our foliage type. So we got base harvestable. I'm going to go ahead and create yeah, let's go ahead and set up our base harvestable. So what we want it to have is a static mesh. And then in its event graph, we want it to have a function. No, oh, for this we also need to set up a blueprint interface. So let's set up a blueprint interface real quick. This will be our interact underscore BPI. This will be how you can actually communicate with the meshes once they're actually created. So I'm just going to open it up and create a hit event. Compile, save, close. Now in our base harvestable in our class settings, let's add that interact BPI. Compile, save, and then on event hit, not the one under collision, but the one that doesn't have it, it'll say target is interact BPI click that and then I am just going to do a spawn emitter at location get actor location I'm going to just use the explosion from the base template and then short delay and then just destroy the actor so here's where you would do all your communicating with the player to tell them what kind of item they'll get or how much how much health you're taking away from your harvestable, all that jazz. So I'm going to go find the foliage I want to use. And I'm going to use tree. So I'll need one tree. Uh, rock. That'll work. And a bush. Don't worry about the size of the rock. We'll set that up with the uh, the foliage painter, and then it'll adjust based on the foliage paint. So if you have, you can have one rock and make it a bunch of different sizes, and uh, all, all that jazz. <laughs> so those are the three I want. So now let's go back into our third person. Blueprint, get our harvestable mesh types. We'll add three elements to it. Now, the, um, the order that you add these is pretty important because it has to match up with the with this over here. So since we got three over here, I'll add three, one more right here. I'm gonna browse to my tree asset. I'm gonna set that as the first one. My rock. It's number two. Browse to asset. And then the bush is number three. So we will grab out our harvestable mesh types. And we are going to find this particular static mesh in this array. Now once we do, we'll get an integer that tells it which number it is. This is why it's important that it matches. So we can hook this to our wild card down here. Oops. All right. And then whatever number it is, that's the class that it will select. So when we, let's see, let's go back to our blueprints, base harvestable, create child, 
got my tree blueprint. It's gonna bug me unless that's that BP is capitalized. Create child rock underscore BP. Create child bush oh, underscore BP. And then we can open up all three of these real quick just so we can define their static meshes. Otherwise, when it spawns, it'll just be empty. So tree is first, browse to asset, tree, static mesh, select. Just like that. Rock is next, so browse to asset, rock, static mesh, static mesh. And then bush, browse, bush, mesh, click compile yes save all bam and that should no I didn't I thought save all would automatically compile the things that we didn't but make sure you compile and save and then just to double check click all that and save all again all right so now let's go into our foliage mode and I'm gonna drag this bush right here and it will automatically convert it from a static mesh type into a foliage type. Now let's save this where we want it. I'm going to go into the blueprints, right click, new folder, foliage types. This way it's easier to find later on. Save. Back to select mode. Browse to my tree. Foliage mode. Drag and drop. Same deal. Blueprints foliage type. Bam, right there. One more time for that little bitty rock. Browse to that little bitty rock. Foliage type. Or pff, foliage. Blueprints foliage type. Save. Alright, now let's paint a few of these. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's adjust some of these parameters. So, the rock, kind of small. I want it to be more like a boulder. So, I'm just going to set it scale here to be 3 and 3. The tree and the bush are probably fine the way they are. Paint density down a little bit. So there's some boulders. I want to go single instance on the trees. And then a bush. Babushka. I don't know why they change colors like that, but it doesn't matter. Now we can also get rid of these so that I don't get confused because I am a natural blonde. And so, now we need to jump in here and tell it which blueprint we want it to spawn. So if we look at our harvestable mesh types and see that tree was zero, rock was one, bush was two. So I want tree, rock, bush, compile that real quick. Oh, and then at the very end after we spawn the actor, we actually want to remove the instance that we are that we just tried to interact with. So, as the foliage type instance, let's remove instance, not instances. This will remove all of them. So, let's remove the instance. And the instance is the hit item. Now when we spawn the actor, we also want to go ahead and call that hit message. That way it automatically, right off the very first hit, otherwise you'll have to hit it twice in order to do the first bit of damage to it. Because uh, it'll spawn the actor and then when we go back we'll be able to do it. So when we jump in... They, oh, right, 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 they don't have collision. So, back in the foliage types. Scroll down to collision presets. I'll just do block all. Block all. Block all. What in the world? Oh. <laughs> Let me move you out. 
and then there we go. Now it's doing all its. There we go. It's doing all its blueprinty stuff. I apparently can't reach far enough for that one. Let me just increase that size a little bit, or that range. So if you didn't want it to immediately be destroyed on the first hit, let's go into our base harvestable and disconnect, or just delete those. So right now if we try to play it, this is only going to work on the first time, and then if I try to do it again, it's not going to do anything. And that is because it's no longer a world static type. What you can do, I do, uh, is go into your project settings and we will set up an object type. So object, new object channel, I'm just gonna call this interact and default is ignore. But now in our base harvestable we can go to our static mesh and set its collision presets to custom set its object type to that new interact, and then set it to block that channel. Then in here, when we make our array of objects that we're looking for, we can add a pin, interact. So now it's blocking our thing, but it's still not doing what we wanted it to do, because we have to do one more thing. It's no longer a foliage instance static mesh component, so the cast is failing. So, since we're checking for the interact type, now we know that we're getting it on that, we can do the hit actor and just call that hit message. Right down here on the cast failed because we're getting a hit on something. So, cast failed can call that function. So now I can hit it and boom, 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 boom. Now let's make it Cusco. So on this we'll just make it print a string just to show that it's not the foliage doing it and I'm gonna make it say boom baby although the explosion pretty much shows that it's not the not the foliage type do or the foliage instance doing it it's the blueprint actor but let me set a tree out real quick. So even though it collides, even though it blocks the channel, it's not doing the boom or saying boom, baby. But this is, and that is. Now the foliage is changing colors just because that's the way these are set up. Uh, so yours probably won't have that issue, but that's how you can have a more optimized version of the interactive foliage Rather than that other video <laughs> that I did a long time ago uh, So hopefully it's helpful and we will get back to all the other fun stuff Starting soon, so I will see you soon. Bye